Have you ever accidentally put a common household item through the laundry? Like a receipt, a pen, your neighbor's cat, or a cell phone that belongs to your significant, well probably after this ex significant other? I did something like that a couple of days ago, except for me, the common household items were actually three capacitors that I'd put into my pocket while I was cleaning up. Yes, in my apartment, capacitors are common household items, because that's how I roll. Anyway, I have these three capacitors. Supposedly the blue one is 100 microfarads, the yellowish gold one is 10 microfarads, and the orange one, I'm not sure what this one is, it says 47 slash 25? I guess that means 47 microfarads with a maximum of 25 volts. I want to see if these squeaky clean capacitors still work, and to do that, I need to measure their capacitances. It might surprise you that despite being an electronics geek, I don't have one of those fancy capacitance meters or expensive digital oscilloscopes. Not yet, anyway. And even if I did, it wouldn't make a very interesting video. So instead, I'm going to use a few cheap components that pretty much every electronics hobbyist has worked with at some point. A couple of resistors, a light-emitting diode, and a 555 timer. I'm not going to show you how to build a 555 timer circuit, since there are already plenty of books, websites, and videos out there that explain how to do that. But I am going to show you how to use a 555 timer to measure capacitance. What we're going to do is connect each of three capacitors to a 555 timer circuit called an A-stable multivibrator, which is just a fancy name for the circuit that turns the LED both on and off automatically. What we can do is measure the frequency, in this case the number of times the LED turns off and on in two minutes, and then use that to calculate the capacitance using this formula that I found on Wikipedia. Before we start, we want to make sure that the LED is going to blink about one or two times per second. Any more and it's going to be too fast for us to count by hand. Any less, and we're not going to get a very precise result. So how do we do that? Well, we could replace the resistors in this circuit with adjustable resistors, and then adjust them until we have something that we can count by hand. But to do that, we'd need to measure the resistances using a multimeter, and I said we weren't going to use any fancy equipment. So we'll save some money and use a little more math instead. If this really is a 100 microfarad capacitor, we can use some simple algebra to rearrange the formula for the frequency of the circuit to figure out some reasonable resistor values. Since we don't care about the circuit's duty cycle, We'll just use the same value for both resistors. Divide both sides of the equation by F and multiply them by R, and we get a formula for the resistor values. Then we just plug in 100 microfarads, and one blink per second, and presto! 4807 ohms. Hmm, I don't have any 4807 ohm resistors, but I do have a 5100 ohm resistor, so I'll use those. Let's see what frequency we get with them. We'll just drop two 5100 ohm resistors into the circuit, connect the capacitor, turn on the power, and it should be flashing a little less than once per second. So far, so good. Now let's connect the circuit and start the timer. What we're doing here is counting the number of times the LED turns on and then off. On off, that's one cycle. On off, that's two cycles. On off, that's three cycles, and so on. We keep counting these cycles until our two minute timer expires. Then we add up the count and divide by two minutes, that is 120 seconds, to get the frequency in cycles per second, also known as Hertz. In this case, it looks like the frequency is about 0.883 Hertz. Then we go back to our original formula, rearrange the variables again so that we're finding the capacitance value, or C. We plug in the numbers, 5100 ohms, 0.883 hertz, the natural logarithm of 2, and bam, 106 microfarads. Since this capacitor was rated at 100 microfarads, that's just what we're looking for. So that takes care of the blue capacitor. It only went through the wash anyway. What about the yellow gold capacitor, rated at 10 microfarads, that went through the washer and the dryer? Well, we just go through the same process. Find a suitable resistor value. In this case, we want 1 or 2 hertz, so 48.09 kilo ohms? 47 kilo ohms should do. Build the circuit? Don't forget to put the capacitor in the right way. These are electrolytic capacitors, so they have a positive end and a negative end. The positive end has the indentation around it. Anyway, we count cycles for a few minutes. Then we calculate the frequency. Looks like 0.84 hertz. Then plug the resistor values and the frequency into the formula, and we get 12 microfarads. Good. So far, we're two for two. The third capacitor is the orange one labeled 47 slash 25, which I'm assuming means 47 microfarads with a maximum of 25 volts. The tricky thing is that I calculated that for approximately 1 hertz, I would need two 10 kilo ohm resistors. But for some reason, I don't seem to have any 10 kilo ohm resistors. But we know that resistances add if you connect them in series, so I just used two 5.1 kilo ohm resistors wherever I was supposed to use a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Close enough. I'll just be sure to use the real resistance values, or 10.2 kilo ohms, in my calculations. Two minutes and a few calculations later, I got 34 microfarads rather than 47 microfarads. What? When I originally recorded this video, I thought that was a problem, and that the laundry had finally defeated this lowly old capacitor. But after researching a bit more, I found out that some electrolytic capacitors can deviate by up to 50% from the rated capacitances. 
This is a little less than a 30% deviation, so it's a lot, but it's not enough to say that the capacitor is actually broken. Maybe it was always that way. So the final score in this epic battle between laundry and capacitors is capacitors 3, laundry 0. My name is Dwayne Litzenberger, and this has been the first ever video edition of my blog, Chosen Plain Text. Thanks for watching.